What's your favorite personal hygiene hack? Using alcoholic acid under my arms to have no odor. And here's two different ways you can use it. Number one, take a cotton pad, pour the glycolic acid on the cotton pad, and then just wipe that under your arm. Easy peasy. Number two is get a spray bottle. I get this one from Amazon. Pour the glycolic acid in there and then just spray under your arm. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. All right, friends, <laughs> let's uh, talk about it. So I asked you all to drop your most common chemical exfoliant and chemical pill questions, and this one came flashing through on all of my social platforms, so I figured we start with it. My thoughts on glycolic acid as a deodorant. It works, but use with caution. So let's talk about why it actually works anyway. So the sweat itself is actually odorless. It's the bacteria that causes the odor. Now your skin lies at a pH of about five, which is a nice happy environment for bacteria. When you're using a product like glycolic acid, it actually decreases the pH down to about three and therefore reduces the amount of bacteria. Reduce bacteria, reduce smell. Smell. But my friends, there are other things that can actually decrease the bacteria under your arm, like your traditional cleansers or even benzoyl peroxide. Now, if you are keen on trying this idea, I do caution that you be really safe about it because glycolic acid can be very irritating by nature. And guess what? This isn't going to actually stop the sweat underneath your arm. You're still going to feel wet, especially if you're someone who has a lot of perspiration that happens throughout the day because this is essentially just acting acting like a deodorant, right? So deodorants kind of mask odor. This helps to reduce odor from bacteria, but there's nothing actually stopping the sweat. Things that stop the sweat are antiperspirants and usually require some type of aluminum or aluminum byproduct to actually plug the sweat duct and stop the sweat. The other thing to be really mindful of is the fact that the skin underneath the arms is extremely delicate. It's very thin. It's thin like your eyelid skin. So you can't just go putting everything in this area because you can get more irritated and this is an area that folds on itself, which means that any product that you actually put there is going to get further absorbed. So you don't want to put anything too strong that's going to cause more irritation. And you guys know how that cascade goes. Irritation, inflammation, and hyperpigmentation. Now, I'm pretty sure that some of you are still going to be intrigued to do this because the hashtag glycolic as deodorant literally has 13.6 million views at the time of this taping. There are definitely safer ways to do this. I would go with a lower strength glycolic acid. I would make sure that you don't do it every single day. Start low and go slow, just like I cautioned with every chemical exfoliant. There is a really kind of more gentle route, which is the topicals. It does come as like glycolic acid acid on this little roller ball so it's also very convenient but the reason that I'm saying it's more gentle is it has things in here like niacinamide, zinc, aloe, glycerin so basically the glycolic acid is also coupled with soothing and anti-inflammatory ingredients but again I caution you not to use that all the time. This one is specifically formulated to help with ingrown hairs and for sensitive areas so that's why we're even bringing that up. Another alternative would be to use a less irritating AHA or BHA deodorant. Lumi makes one with mandelic acid, but be cautious. There are some that actually do have essential oils, I believe. So look for the one that is more hypoallergenic that just has the mandelic acid in there. And then there is a company called Salt Air, which makes beta hydroxy acid or salicylic acid and zinc in their deodorant. I know of that one because last year when my mom was going through chemotherapy, her oncologist was very adamant about her finding an aluminum-free deodorant that also was free of baking soda. So we went through a rabbit hole of hundreds of deodorants until we landed on one that actually worked. I can attest that it works, but I am not someone who sweats a lot, so keep that in mind. It's not gonna stop you from sweating. This also kind of brings up a really important point. Baking soda is found in a lot of natural deodorants. Baking soda is very alkaline at a pH of nine, and this can be super irritating to the skin. It can lead to things like 
like dryness and hyperpigmentation. So that is another question that you guys had for me, which is what's the best chemical exfoliant to help fade hyperpigmentation specifically under the arm? In this case, you definitely want to use something more gentle, starting low, going slow. There was actually a recent study that showed that using mandelic acid and salicylic acid chemical peels under the arm for hyperpigmentation, specifically acanthosis nigricans, which is this thick, velvety hyperpigmentation, can be associated with insulin resistance, but can also not be associated with insulin resistance. And it was done in those with a deeper Fitzpatrick skin of four to five of Indian descent. And it showed really good results using the mandelic acid and salicylic acid chemical peels under the arm. This was also coupled with a glycolic and urea cream that was used. Now this was done in office, but there is a safe way for you to do it at home. You could actually use the mandelic and salicylic acid from the youth to the people because this is a very low concentration. So it's going to take some time. Start low, go slow, be consistent. And again, this was for acanthosis nigricans, which is a big, thick, velvety hyperpigmentation. If you're dealing with a thinner, more delicate type of hyperpigmentation, this is a fantastic way to go. And then you can also incorporate a glycolic acid or urea-based lotion. But definitely start low, maybe alternate different days in using those products and see if it helps to fade your hyperpigmentation. Now, if you have a very mild hyperpigmentation, you may wanna just go with using an exfoliant a couple of times a week, maybe using that lotion a few times a week. And then what you can do more consistently is use deodorants that actually are made to help to even out your skin tone. This one is secret and it's actually an antiperspirant. Sorry, it's not a deodorant, meaning that it helps to stop the sweat. Um, but this one also has vitamin C and niacinamide in there. So you can be consistent in using them and not have to worry about layering too many different products onto your skin. All right, on to the next question. Over on my IG, I got this one a lot. Will chemical peels make my skin thin? No, my friends, chemical peels will not make your skin thin. If anything, it can actually help to thicken up your skin by increasing the collagen within your dermis. The only part of the skin that actually gets thinner with a chemical exfoliant or a chemical peel is the stratum corneum, which is that top layer of dead skin cells that we want to become thinner because it's what actually kills our radiance. It makes the skin look more dull. So you shed that off with chemical exfoliant and you help to thicken up the dermis, which is where the good stuff is, the collagen and the elastin. So nope, don't worry. Your skin is not going to get thin. It's just going to be more radiant, but don't overdo it. All right guys, next common question I got was, I did not shed when I received a chemical peel. Does this mean it didn't work? All right, so this came across every single platform and I know that I answered this on my previous chemical peel video, so I'll link them if you haven't seen those. But just because you don't actually have visible flaking or shedding on the top layer of the skin doesn't mean that the chemical peel and the ingredients are not doing what they need to do underneath the skin. Especially if you're someone who exfoliates a lot or you're using a retinol, there's just not as much dead skin on the top layer to actually shed off. But trust that those ingredients are still working on your melanocytes. They're still doing all the good things that chemical peels can do for your skin, even if you don't see visible shedding. In fact, only about one third of people get like that really heavy shedding that happens in the dramatic Instagrams and YouTubes and TikToks that you're seeing. And then another one third people will get kind of a light flaking. And then there are another subset of people that literally don't have any of that happen to the surface of the skin, but still get all of the beautiful results that happen underneath the skin. So to answer your question, no, it does not mean that it didn't work. It means that you didn't have as much dead skin cells on the top layer of the skin to actually shed and exfoliate off. This is a good question. Chemical pills can actually help with acne, especially the ones that deliver acne fighting ingredients, things like benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, mandelic acid. Chemical pills can help to get rid of a lot of that dead skin cells and the keratin that kind of gets built up and clogs the pores. It can also help with improving oil flow throughout the pore into the surface of the skin. So a lot of times with acne, the skin cells are sticky and kind of plugged together because there's just too much oil there. Now what you may notice is in the very beginning Beginning, the eruptions that were under the skin are starting to show as that skin is shed off. This will actually settle down in about two to three weeks. 
So if you are someone with active acne, I would recommend that you ask for a chemical peel that is specific for acne because it's going to help to deliver those benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, etc. that can help to decrease those eruptions that may occur. But over time, chemical peels are actually a really good tool to have in your toolbox if you're someone who deals with active acne. So those were by far the most common questions on both chemical exfoliants and chemical peels across all of my platforms. Hopefully I answered your question. If not, there were two other videos in this chemical peel series that I will link down below and your answer should be in there. If not, leave it down below. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, share all the good things and let me know what you want to see next time. Until next time everyone, be well.